Hi Year 11, we're looking at Act 5 of Measure for Measure and the climactic moment. Um, you can tell that it's the climax because basically every actor in the entire troupe is on the stage at the moment. Um, so we start off with the Duke um, saying hello to Angelo and Aeschylus. So when he says to Angelo, my very worthy cousin, fairly met, and then he says to Aeschylus, our old and faithful friend, we are glad to see you. And then Angelo and Aeschylus reply together, um, welcome back. And the Duke says, thanks. And then he says, I've been uh, inquiring about how you've been going while I was away. I've heard you've done um, a really good job. We hear such goodness of your justice. And then he says, as well as th thanking you publicly, I'll also give you more reward later. Um, and Angelo says, oh, you make my gratefulness grow every time. And the Duke goes into a monologue um, in response to Angelo with this really over-the-top praise, um, I think perhaps um, to help hide the fact that he knows the truth about Angelo, or perhaps to make the contrast between Angelo as he appeared at the beginning of the play and Angelo as he is at the end of the play, to make that contrast much more strongly felt by the audience. So he says um, to Angelo, your dessert speaks loud and I should wrong it to lock it in the wards of covert bosom when it deserves with characters of brass a faulted residence against the tooth of time and razor of oblivion. So that just means um, the things that you deserve are um, clear and it would be really wrong to keep it inside my heart, to lock it up inside my chest um, because it deserves to be um, published so that all will know and that no one will ever forget how, how what, you, what you deserve. Um, so it links back to the speech in Act 1, Scene 1, with the um, simile about how, um, you know, me men on earth are like um, heaven's torches and that if we don't show our light to other people, it's as though we don't even have it. But you'll notice that the Duke uses um, the slightly ambiguous phrase, your dessert. So um, it's sort of like saying... Um, yes, I'm going to give you what you deserve, and, and it reads like it's a compliment, like it's a positive thing, but as the audience, we know that actually Angelo's dessert, what Angelo deserves, is um, quite negative. So then he says, give me your hand, let the subject see to make them know that outward courtesies would fain proclaim favours that keep within. So he says, um, hold my hand so that everyone can see how much I like you and how much I respect you. And then he says, come Aeschylus, you must walk by us on our other hand, and good supporters are you. So I want everyone to recognise Aeschylus as well. Um, Friar Peter and Isabella come forward, and Friar Peter says to Isabella, this is a good moment, um, kneel in front of him and tell him what you want. And Isabella responds in high dramatic form, and she says, justice, a royal duke, avail your regard upon a wronged, I would fain have said, a maid. O worthy prince, dishonour not your eye by throwing it on any other object, till you have heard me in my true complaint and given me justice, 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 justice. So um, he says, she basically just says, look at me, I am a wronged woman. Um, she wants to call herself a maid, but that means virgin, and she's apparently not anymore. Um, and she, he says, don't she says, don't look away from me, don't get distracted, um, make sure that you stay here and give me justice. So the repetition of the word justice there um, emphasises the idea that she wants. Um, but notice that her mannerisms through here are in pretty stark contrast to how she tried to save Claudio's life in the beginning. Um, so the Duke responds by saying, relate your wrongs, who's treated you badly, here's Lord Angelo, he'll deal with this. Um, and Isabella replies by saying... Um, asking me to let Angelo judge this would be like seeking redemption from the devil. So she's comparing Angelo to the devil. Um, Hear me yourself, for that which I must speak must either punish me, not being believed, or wring redress from you. Hear me or hear me here. So she's saying, if you don't believe what I have to say, then I'm going to end up imprisoned for slander. But if you do believe me, then you'll fix it. Um, and... Angelo, of course, has been worried about this moment since he initially propositioned Isabella. So he jumps in and says, oh, look, I think she's crazy. She was trying to um, save her brother and he was cut off by justice. He was killed by the law. And Isabella, of course, is outraged by the fact that he would say that and repeats it back to him. By course of justice, there was nothing just about killing him. 
Um, and Angela just carries on. She's going to speak really weird things. And Isabella reacts to that and says, Most strange, but yet most truly will I speak. That Angelo is forsworn. Forsworn means liar. Um, so, that Angelo is a liar, is it not strange? That Angelo is a murderer, is it not strange? That Angelo is an adulterous thief, a hypocrite, a virgin violator, is it not strange and strange? So, she's using um, really strong negative terms here. Um, she's using the repetition of the sentence structure as well um, in order to drive home her point. Um, and so, the Duke says, yes, that's very strange. Um, and Isabella responds by saying, well, it's more true than it is strange because um, truth is absolute. Something is either true forever or it's not true forever. Um, or whereas strangeness is relative. Something might be strange to one person, but it won't be strange to others. Um, and the Duke responds by saying, she's a nutter, take her away. And Isabella says, no, please, even if you think that I'm mad, please listen to me. And she says, make not impossible that which but seems unlike. So don't act as though it's impossible just because it seems unlikely. And then she goes on and says, it's not impossible because it's possible that the worst villain could seem as shy, as grave, as just, as absolute as Angelo. Even so may Angelo in all his dressings, characters, titles, forms be an arch villain. So she's just sort of saying, because someone who is a really wicked villain would be able to um, control the way they seem. Um, even so, Angel might uh, Angelo must seem amazing, but really be an arch villain. Um, so it's quite logically formed. So you can see she's reacted to these accusations of madness. She's gone from using very strong emotional language to bringing it back to very logically framed arguments um, because she wasn't winning the Duke over with her um, emotional responses. Um, and the Duke responds to that by saying, well, she does use logical and rational arguments and therefore she seems sane even though what she's saying about Angelo sounds crazy. Um, and Isabella says, stop harping on about that. Don't, don't worry about whether I'm crazy or not. She says, just let your reason serve to make the truth appear where it seems hid and to hide the false seems true. So it comes back to um, that concept of... Um, appearances as opposed to reality or false appearances or seeming that we've been talking about throughout the whole play. And she's just saying, use your logic to determine what's true from what's false. So it links in quite strongly with the themes of the play up till this point. Um, and the Duke responds by saying, yes, that's very reasonable. Tell me what you want. Isabella just outlines the um, summary of the events that have happened so far and you'll notice that the language that she uses is really clear and unemotional um, and logical. She gets up to the part where Lucio comes in and he interrupts um, and says yes that's me and Isabella says yes that's him. Um, and the Duke gets quite um, irritated with Lucio because he doesn't want um, he doesn't want Lucio to interrupt. So there's two possible interpretations of this. One could be that the Duke is so annoyed at Lucio from all of his slandering earlier in the play that he just wants Lucio to be quiet and stand to the side. Um, and the other possibility is that the Duke is his the Duke has set up a very elaborate plot here, and it's sort of very important that things run according to the scheme that he's set up. So Lucio constantly interrupting. Um, might mean that the Duke is now worried that Lucio's unpredictability will ruin his plan. So um, he tells Lucio pretty sternly to stop talking. Um, and then we finally get back to it down here, where the Duke says to Isabella, proceed. Um, and Isabella says, I went to see this pernicious caitiff. So caitiff means villain, and pernicious means you know, horrible. Um, and the Duke interrupts again and says, mm, stick to the facts, don't speak like a mad person, go back to sounding cool and logical, um, and they carry on. So you can contrast the Duke's mannerisms throughout this scene um, to uh, the mannerisms that Angelo and Aeschylus have as judges in Act 2, Scene 1, when um, Elbow, Froth and Pompey come before him. Uh, come before them. So you can see that he's very professional in his approach to being a judge. So then she just continues outlining the events of what happens throughout the play. Um, and it's pretty, um, it's pretty logical. 
up until the point where she says that um, Angelo wanted the gift of her chaste body to his concupiscible intemperate lust. So I just want to draw your attention there to the word intemperate, um, of course, which is the opposite to being measured. Um, so it comes back to the title of the play there. Um, I think it's also very interesting that Isabella says that um, after after Angelo um, propositioned her, she allowed her sisterly remorse to confute her honour, as in her um, sense of her sense of sisterly duty um, gave way, um, made her honour give way. So she's saying that she slept with Angelo out of a sense of sisterly duty. Um, it makes you wonder if perhaps Isabella does feel a little bit ashamed that she wasn't more conflicted back when she was making that decision, whether she was going to sleep with Angelo or allow Claudio to die. Um, at the time, she was very vehement that she would never, ever do that. Um, but the way that she's worded it here makes it sound like perhaps she should perhaps she should have considered it more. Anyway, so she just finishes outlining um, what happens, and the Duke says sarcastically, this is most likely. Yeah, right. Um, and Isabella says, oh, I wish it were as likely as it is true. I wish it sounded as true as it is. Um, and the Duke responds by saying, basically, you're either crazy or someone has put you up to this in order to shame Angelo. Um, and then he says why she's crazy. Because Angelo's integrity stands without blemish. So nothing, um, nothing can possibly stain Angelo's integrity because it's too well known and well practiced. So that comes back to his reputation again, um, because his reputation as um, being a man of strong integrity is allowing it to stand up. Then he says, um, it imports no reason that with such vehemency he should pursue faults proper to himself. So there's no sense behind it. If he committed the same crime, he would never punish someone else for doing it. And he explains that further. If he had so offended, he would have weighed thy brother by himself and not have cut him off. So basically, if Angelo was guilty of the same crime as Claudio, Angelo would never punish Claudio. Um, so this is a, a, a very blunt and highly praising speech about Angelo. Um, and I think it would be really interesting if you were staging this to think about what body language you'd want Angelo to have during this. You know, would you have him looking uncomfortable and like all of this praise where, that he really doesn't measure? Would you have him looking awkward and as though he's ashamed of himself? Or would you have him looking quite confident and arrogant despite the fact that he's the opposite of this? Um, so then the Duke says, no, someone set you up. Tell me who told you to come and talk about this. And Isabel is quite disappointed because she wanted a fair trial. So she says, is this it? Is this your justice? Um, and she just says, um, that's all right. Eventually, when everyone dies, we'll all get justice then. Um, and she says, when, when that happens, when we all die, um, heaven will unfold the evil which is here wrapped up in countenance. So it comes back to that idea of false appearances. Um, and then she tries to leave. And the Duke says, nope, you can't leave. Arrest her. She needs to go to prison um, because she has committed treason. She has committed treason against um, Angelo. Um, Who knew that you were coming here? And Isabella says, Friar Lodovic. Um, that's the Duke. That's the name that the Duke took on when he was dressed as a friar. And the Duke says, who is this Lodovic man? And Lucio jumps in and accuses the friar of treason against the Duke. So he's switching around what happened and all the things that he said against the Duke. He's now saying the friar said against the Duke. Um, so that just sort of goes on for a while. Then friar jumps in and says um, that basically he thinks that Isabella has wrongfully accused Angelo, um, who has never touched her. Um, so... He, so we've been led to believe that the friar will support Isabella throughout this, um, and now he appears to be backing away from her 